Hey, what's up everyone? I'm coming here today to create this little video because I've been asked probably about a hundred times just in the last week on how I like setting up my new project. So you, I'm currently using .NET Core 3.1 for a lot of my projects for my current work that I do. And by utilizing .NET Core, I try to also follow kind of my own version of the Onion architecture. So I really like to kind of show and create this video today on getting started with Visual Studio with the Onion architecture, creating numerous layers, um, having your entity framework layer in its own project class. I've been asked a lot of questions about that. So I like to kind of create this video as a how-to and how to really create a decent application using this infrastructure because I use the same infrastructure over and over it makes it for very clean code very clean straightforward and that's why I kind of create it that way so let's go ahead and get started I'm going to go ahead and open up Visual Studio here and what I normally do is here is I go ahead and create a new project and here I always find and you can just type in here you can find for like a blank solution I always start with a blank solution because I like creating multiple projects and try to lay all that out. Um, that is where I like to go. So there it is, blank solution, hit next. And for this project, let's just go ahead and create a simple app. We're gonna call this app task list. Okay, and I like using that. So now we're gonna create this app here and we have a project called task list now i normally come in here and i and i like add in a couple projects so let's add in a few projects here to kind of get started um here i like doing a class library.net core so make sure just if you're looking these up it's easy just to search as you use them more and more they come over here so class library.net core and again i'm using .NET core 3.1 for everything that i'm doing um, first thing I like to create is something to really hold all my models. That's what I call a domain infrastructure. This is really kind of all of the modeling, all of the data, all of this. I really use the, the Onion architecture for to try to keep my business logic and my UI layer separate. So try to create like class libraries that work together so you're not having to create numerous different code levels. So here I try to create all my models and everything inside this. Let's go ahead and create that class library. Okay, now that we have a class library, I like creating one other section here called a DAO. So let's go again, there's another class library selected. We're gonna create this and this will be our DAO. This DAO is just our data access layer. This is pretty simple. This is going to allow us the ability to um, put all of our entity framework code kind of here it kind of lives for all that data access it's kind of that nice repository of data so we're going to use entity framework core with this it's pretty nice to be able to get that going so let's go ahead and hit create all right so now i got my dal created i like creating one other class here and this is kind of my services layer I tend to put all my business logic directly inside here. This is a great services layer. Um, things that I like to work with is with this service layer. So let's go ahead and get that started as well. So here I'm going to create task list dot services. Some people make this like a utility layer. Um, I, I per personally just create all my services. This is where you'll put like all your log files all of your email code, kind of like your services layer, allows you to be able to create that. And we'll go through those. We'll, we'll make sure that we get in here, we create those layers, we create that infrastructure to kind of get that all layered in here. So let's go ahead and create there. All right, so now from our task list services, truly this is where everything is. So if you look at this, I have all my models, I have a DAO, and then I have services. So it makes it kind of nice here to be able to create this sort of infrastructure now what I need is some sort of UI. The reason I like doing this, because then you can actually create some nice unit testing, some nice test scripts, 
to be able to really look at, you know, are you doing things without having to spin up a UI? I've seen too many developers put too much code into the UI layers. And so then a lot of times you might have like a front end application where somebody's visiting a website to access that web app. That web app then has numerous other layers such as somebody might want to access that through the mobile app. And so instead of having numerous functions, you kind of create a services layer and an API within your code that then you can reuse that code in other areas. So here I'm going to create one other section. Let's just create a .NET Core web app. So let's come here. We're going to go ASP.NET Core web application, hit next, and let's just call this task list. And I'm going to call this web. Some people call it UI. It's truly it's your own preference. Um, so let's go ahead and call that task list web. Um, I like making sure it's a web application. You're going to kind of get this access. We're going to make sure it's .NET Core 3.1. If you don't have .NET Core 3.1, make sure you download the SDKs and get that kind of going. Um, get it installed. I make sure change authentication to none. If you guys want me in another video will discuss how authentication can be played into this type of scenario. But in this scenario, we're not going to do any type of authentication. Kind of treat this as like an intranet or front end app. I do like configuring this for HTTPS. It's pretty nice. I like that. And let's go ahead and raise our runtime. I don't need that. So let's just go ahead and hit create. Now, first thing I want to do here is let's go ahead and get these all closed. Kind of close all. There we go. Let's go ahead and set this as a startup project. So here it's pretty interesting. If we if we run this now, right, we run this application, it's just a simple ASP.NET includes its basic stuff, bootstrap, different things, Tasks Web. Kind of nice. Um, I like that .NET includes that. They're not very clean. I've seen a lot of different templates that are actually a little bit better. So definitely something nice to be able to take a look at. <coughs> okay, so now that we have the project kind of built, I like getting things kind of started with certain things that I like to work on. So for example, I wanna make sure that we get Entity Framework installed. Um, those are a couple key things and you're gonna have to install those in a couple different areas. Right, so let's go ahead and get Entity Framework here installed in our DAO, right? So as I look here in my DAO, there's going to be a couple things and a couple packages that I like adding. So let's just right click here, Manage NuGet Packages, and let's create, let's add one here. So first one I'm going to add is, let's go Microsoft. The entity framework core and we want SQL server so entity framework core dot SQL server and let's go ahead and install that go ahead and accept this will install all the NuGet packages makes it kind of nice um, there's a couple other ones here that we're going to install so let's go ahead and do a couple other ones so we're going to say Microsoft ASP.NET core HTTP abstractions. Um, this is actually a, we'll talk about this. I use abstractions to kind of identify who the user is, who's currently logged in, um, and some of my layers. We're going to discuss that here. Like I said, I, I don't do currently in this video, we're not going to talk about authentication, but that makes a really nice option to kind of get some abstractions going. Let's go ahead and get that. And let's see, what else do I need? Uh, I also like to make sure we have a dependency model in there. So Microsoft extensions and dependency model. So let's go ahead and get that going. Um, dependency model, make sure it's dependency model, not dependency injection. Let's go ahead and hit install, I accept. Okay. So now that we got that, you're also going to need to do a couple things in our in our web layer as well. It's key that we add some of these projects and these packages in here. Um, very important to be able to have that. So let's come in here 
and let's add in some packages that I know we're going to need here. All right. So same thing, we're going to need to install the SQL Server one. So let's come back in here. There's a SQL Server. There it is. That needs to get installed here. Because I use the .NET tools, um, let's go ahead and install that too. So .NET Framework .core .tools. I want to install that as well. And then the other one will be that design one that we'll need to add in there as well. So let's go ahead here and we're going to add in the design option. Okay. So now our packages, those three for those are important. All right. So now that we have that kind of set up, let's go ahead and get set up our, our framework here. So a few things. I like to at least get my connection strings and all that kind of configured. While we're doing that, let's go ahead and open up our app settings. We're going to create a new section here. We're going to call those connection strings. Right. Click here on our connection strings. Okay. Here, let's just call this default connection. Now this is a standard. I've already created this database prior to creating this video. So you just need to make sure that whatever database you go out there and create, use it, use it locally. Um, so let's just go ahead and specify server. I'm going to say local uh, integrated security equals true. Um, we're going to say database equals task list. And then I always add this as well, multiple active result sets equal true. All right. All right. So now we have a connection string that we can be able to access from our startup class. Um, that's going to be important to obviously get those things kind of going. Um, there's two things that I typically like to get set up in my services layer as I get things going. So here we have that controllers.view. A couple other things that I like to come in here and do, such as services. And we're going to say add. I use this HTTP contacts accessor. It's nice to have that, that we're going to need later on. Um, we'll talk about that in the future, but here are services and we're going to add in DB context. We're going to add now we need to be able to create our DB context. Forgot to step forward a little bit. So let's go back up here to our DAO. Sorry about that. Let's, before we create this inside our configure services, let's come back up here to the DAO. So here in the DAO, I'm going to call this task list, right? Uh, DB context, right? Yep, I want to do that. So now for my DAO, I have a DB context. Let's go ahead and do a couple things here. Um, I'm going to say using Microsoft dot entity framework core, get that added in there. I'm also going to add using Microsoft dot ASP.NET core and then the HTTP. That's going to be key so we can be able to get the logged in user in a later video. All right. So now we should be able to come in here and add DB context. Let's go ahead and add a couple things that I know we're going to need. This is our HTTP accessor that we just added so that way we in the future can be able to get access to your logged in users. Um, so let's go ahead and add that in here as well. And there we go. All right. So now let's create our constructors here. We're going to call this task list DB context. Now it's important DB context options. And we're going to call this task list DB context. Create the options. I'm 
also going to do a little bit of dependency injection here. Allows us to be able to exit this later on. All right. So now we kind of are set up here a little bit. It's kind of nice to be able to get this set up. So let's go ahead and specify this. There we go. All right. Now, this is our DB context. Pretty nice, nice little setup that we have. Let's go back now to our startup where we were trying to get that added. So this allows basically as .NET Core builds, it kind of constructs everything and allows us to be able to say, hey, this is where our base setup is. And this is the connection string that you need to be able to use. So we need to be able to specify now what connection string entity framework is going to use. So let's go ahead here and get that started. Task list DB context. Now this is going to give us, and it might allow us to add a reference right here, add a reference to task list .dal. That makes great. Love that IntelliSense that we get. Now let's go ahead and specify a couple options, right? So we're going to say options, and we're going to say options that use SQL Server, and here we're going to say configuration dot get connection string, and I think we specify that as default connection. Let's just verify that with our app settings. Yep, default connection. All right. Now, there is a couple things that because we created a tasklist.dal, we need to let it know what is the migration assembly that this is going to run under, right? So since we're going to be using migrations, um, it's going to be important to be able to set that migration assembly. So I'm going to say mig. And we're going to say mig dot migrations assembly. And now all we want to do is type in what we created that project class. So it's task list dot dal. So then that way everything goes into that project list. And let's add a semicolon there. Okay, so that pretty much what we just did here is we created options equals to use SQL Server. Then we created a migrations, migrations assembly. This allows us to be able to create that. Makes a nice, easy to use option. And now, truly, Entity Framework can be able to communicate with your database in the back end. Um, there's a couple things that we'll want to make sure that we add in here. So I'm just going to add in a couple other little things here. Um, so we're going to say services dot add a singleton. This is again so we can be able to access in later versions who's currently logged in and have access to the HTTP context in multiple classes. So it actually makes it pretty nice. Um, Dex accessor. There we go. Okay. So here we have obviously our singletons we have everything this is what we're going to be able to access the http context in the future that makes it very nice this add db context we can be able to communicate with the database and adds the http context to be able to access from multiple projects and yeah as of right now all that looks pretty good i don't see any other issues Let's go ahead now and get started with creating what I like here as a base entity. So let's go ahead and create a base entity. Um, yeah. And here in my base entity, I like to create things that in my base entity that I, I know I'm always going to use, right? So you always know you're going to have like an ID field. That's going to be your primary key. Um, you're going to probably have, you know, a create by, a um, modified by, you know, a create date, modified date. I mean, all those on every single model is always needed. So as we are creating these models, it's kind of nice to be able to have kind of this base entity that will kind of 
give us everything that we're looking for. So here I'm gonna put in a using, just cause I like data annotations. Let's go ahead and get those added here. Component model, the data annotations. Um, for example, in this one, we're gonna specify a public, an int, and a, we're gonna say an ID. Now here, I'm gonna go ahead and add an attribute here that says it's a key. Okay, now I want to know a couple other things. I want to know public date time, um, created date, or let's say date created. Makes it a little easier. I'm going to put this in here as well, public date time, and we're going to say last modified. Right. And just because we'll use it in future, we're going to say public string and the created by ID. And we'll say public string created by, or I'm sorry, let's do modified by ID. Here, I forgot to say Michael. Okay, so here's a couple things that pretty much every model currently has. One thing I really like to add to this is, and, and I get this quite often, is I always get requests as a developer that as I'm building apps, a lot of my apps are forms, data forms, data entry, that maybe customer service is filling out or different you know field workers that they have these forms that they have to fill out and then the data has to get kind of brought back into the system so there's been times where somebody will pick up the phone and they'll tell us like hey you know i accidentally deleted that record are you guys able to restore that now that can be a difficult task right because it depends on how big your backups are how long those backups work um, and how long ago did they delete it? What I like to do is I like to add in a flag here and truly I don't like to delete anything. It makes it a little bit easier. Now, granted it adds storage and it adds things and you can run cleanup tasks to kind of clean this up. We're just going to say by default, is it deleted? No, it's not. And so nice part is, is if we ever get somebody that picks up a phone and calls me and says, hey, you know, I deleted this. Is there any way I could get it back? You just have to go in there in the database, make a flag change, change it from false to true, and bingo, you're all set. So it makes it kind of nice. Um, so here, I also, just because sometimes people do some scaffolding, I always try to tell it, don't scaffold these columns. You don't need these. These are pretty centrally located. Not, no need to be able to, to do that. Um, but I just like to make sure that I specify what needs to be scaffolded and what doesn't need to be scaffolded. Um, here as well, I like to, let's go in and put some, since I'm using a string, we're going to say string length. And let's just put 255, make it a little bit easier. Because what happens is, is migrations, if you don't specify, you know, string lengths or certain things, then it's just gonna go nvar char max and not needed. Slows down, performance problems, different things happen. So it's important to go ahead and specify that these are in there. Now these strings, they're not required because in the beginning, we really don't need them. So let's go ahead, that's kind of my base entity. Let's go ahead now and move on and let's create our first model with all of this, right? So I like to create my first model and here I'm gonna create another model. We're gonna create a new class and let's call this, um, let's call this task, task item. And here in my task item, I'm going to come in here and we're going to say public class task item. And here we're going to do base entity, right? So base entity, 
and brings in all those those options that we created previously such as ID is deleted etc here I want to call this maybe public string and here what do we want to say task name right. and here we'll want to say this is required this here is string length 255 and let's give a name display name equals um, task name right now I also maybe want to say uh, put a boolean flag in here that says bool is completed all right so we just want to create a simple flag here is completed and the default just in case you don't fill this out is always false and again we're gonna say display and we'll put a nice display name on it is completed question mark okay so now that we have our item we now need to go into what we call here our domain right so our domain we have this item we need to add this domain to have a db set so let's go ahead and specify the db set here and db set task list uh, i'm sorry task item and we're going to call these task items get set okay All right, awesome. So this task items, this is great. Allows us to be able to specify that this item now is part of our DB context. Allows us to create some migrations against that to automatically create the tables. Um, so let's go ahead now that I've kind of created this base project and we kind of created these base entities. The one thing that I do like to add is one other task. And this task here is, is what we what I call my override. So task list db context dot overrides. Right? So now I have this class here and it's pretty great. I use this pretty often. This is something that as long as you have a base entity, you should be able to copy and paste this in every one of your projects. So by having this override class, this is gonna do a bunch of things. It's gonna automatically set like the date times of our you know, modified and created dates. It's gonna automatically set the flag to is deleted. So I mean, there's a lot of different options that this happens. Um, the biggest thing is with all of this is to make both of, make this one a partial class and make your original DB context also a partial class. So let's go ahead and get those created here as we create these, these items. Okay, so now that we have these partial classes, like I said, I've used this same model numerous different times. Um, and there's a couple things that I like to do. So here, I'm gonna type it out as I go. It, I'll be going kind of quick, don't worry. I will have this in the description where you guys can be able to download everything that is in here in this class, specifically in these overrides. I'll include a copy of where you can go ahead and get that. So here, let's go ahead and download this um, and start setting some of these things up. All right, so here, we create a set global query. This global query is pretty great for us because what I'm doing in this entire setup here is I'm saying it's always, anytime we have a, a model that has a base entity, we always know that it has a key ID and has a query filter is deleted, right? So, there's a couple things that we'll need to create here, and I'm just gonna copy and paste down a couple of these just to kind of save time in this video. So here is a stack read only method, and 
that we start getting here. And let's go ahead and call this task list DB contacts. And so now we're going to use these in future options. So go ahead and inherit the different things that are missing. Now, one other thing is we're going to get all of our entity types. So we need to make sure that we grab all these entity types. Let's copy those. Now, I also like to make sure that we get all referencing assemblies. It's kind of a option that we're missing. So now that we have that in there, that should give you everything. Dependency context, we need to inherit those. And our system.io. All right. So now I have a project, and we, and we talked about this previously, that really allows you to be able to grab a certain employee and be able to access what employee is currently logged in. This is obviously meant to be grabbed from the HTTP context. So in this scenario, we're going to create a function and this function is going to be get logged in employee ID. But remember, ours was a string and other projects have had to use long IDs or different things. And here we're just going to say return, get rid of this long.parse. Another project I used had longs. So this will go ahead and return it. So what we do here is that we basically say, OK, let's get the HTTP context. Here's the HTTP context, HTTP context. Right, and here we're gonna say get the HTTP context. If the HTTP context is not null, right, then proceed. HTTP context dot user doesn't equal null, so the user is actually logged in. And then here we say var user HTTP context user, and then obviously for claim types, I want to get the name identifier. So now, if nothing was found during that scenario and the user's not null, then I should have the user's ID string. I return that ID string and now that now I'm able to send who that currently logged in user is. It's nice to keep kind of a record of who's making those changes and what's kind of happening. Um, so now I like to take one other option. Now this is something that some people do. Some people can come in here and I say let's create a method called private void on before save um, or on before saving right so now we're going to call this method every single time before it actually executes the save result so in here i'm going to copy and paste again in the interest of time we're going to take a look at a couple things so here is our var entries and then we have a change tracker dot entries, right? And then for each of our entry and entries, and then we say if the entry is a base entity and it's trackable, then what we want to do is now get the current time. I like to use UTC now, and then var user ID, which is the current logged in user. Now it's just a simple switch case. What we're looking at here is the entry and the state of what the entry is before it gets saved in the database. So here we have case entity state is modified. And in that case, we have last modified equals now, trackable.modify ID equals user ID, and then we break out of it. If the entry state is added, then we do date created equals now, last modified equals now, is deleted equals false modified by ID, user ID, created by ID equals user ID. Now, in case of deleted, we actually wanna switch the state because we don't wanna delete it, remember? We just wanna specify that that is deleted flag is now true. So what, what we're gonna do is still set the modified ID here, but here I set is deleted equals true. Now, you could also set in here and say trackable, dot last modified equals now right just to kind of make everything kind of set up and be able to take a look at this and again like i said i'm going to share this project at the end allows you to be able to go through and kind of get things set up 
and go down that road. So now we have this function that we want to call every single time before something's saved. So in that scenario, what we need to do is we need to override a couple methods, right? So here I'm going to say override. Here I can get, and we're going to say save changes. We want that one. Looking at override right before we say return base. We, remember, we just want to call on before saving. Right now, what I want is public override. And this is the save of changes asynchronously. Uh, cancel equal default. Let's do that one. Bing. Okay. Here, we are going to say again on before saving. Let's go here, control dot should give us system dot threading and that one should be dot tasks. Okay, so from now on, now what this happens is every time I call save changes, it's gonna call this on before, on before saving, which remember does all these different updates to our model. So you never really have to specify that and what we're building and what we're doing to be able to set that up. So now I take a look here and we have everything set. Our on before saving works. Um, works pretty nicely. I have those overrides. And pretty much now I can create my models as many as I want. I can be able to create different things as I want and be able to go down that road. Now there is a couple other things that I like to do here um, in services that I will dive into. But before we get into services, let's go ahead and see this all in action and let's see it start running. So here, what I wanna do is I'm gonna go to the home controller and let's go ahead and add in private. Oh, before we do that, we need to add some references. I think we already did those. Let's take a look here. Um, projects, Dow. I wanna add one more reference here. So we're gonna say add reference. I'm going to add the domain. I'm also going to add the services because we're going to need all three of those and what we're working on. Okay, great. Okay, so now let's go ahead and say private uh, taskless DB context, right? And we're going to call this um, DB. Here, I'm going to go ahead and initialize this. So we're going to say task list DB context. Uh, it's DB. Let's go ahead and specify it here. DB equals DB. Now, the nice part is, is I can now access everything that I want to be able to access. I have my loggers. I have my DBs. It's logger. Not really need it. Kind of comes standard. Um, but everything else that I have is kind of ready to go. And so let's go ahead here and run this, make sure it all builds without having any problems. Yep, everything built, it looks good. Um, what I'm going to do now that we have this home controller I'm just going to put everything in the home list for now. We're going to come here and say public I action result and tasks. All right. We're going to say return view. And here I'm just going to, oops, let's go ahead, DB and task items. And we're just going to return it as a number. Bingo. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, just so it's set, I'm going to go ahead and add a view here. And we're going to call it tasks. Okay, now that that's set, let's go ahead and specify what our model is going to be. 
and our model remember is coming from this taskless enumerable so I'm going to say I enumerable and this is taskless dot domain dot task item now that's our model now one thing I like to do is actually come down here to my views my view imports and I like to add a couple things so using taskless dot domain I also like using at using taskless dot services and there we go so now I should be able to take that out and I still have that task item so because I use that view import, it now allows all those to work. So here, let's go ahead and start creating a couple fun little items. Let's go ahead and build this up. We're gonna say div class equals column large 12. We want it to take up a full length. And let's go ahead and create a table here. And in this table, we're going to say class, table, table, responsive. I like table bordered. And there we go. Now here in the T head, we're going to create a couple things. We're going to say task name. We're also going to say task is task completed we're going to add one more here we're going to say task created all right great so now let's go into our t body and let's add in this model now what i like to do is also put in if the model is empty so let's say oops is greater than zero then we'll put in our content else we will say that why are you doing that? oh because of the group we got that okay so here we're gonna say table row td call span three now what i like to do is then add a class here text center and here we're going to say no records done. All right. On this side, though, now what we're going to do is because we have multiple records, we're going to run a for each command. We're going to say for each task in model, now we need to be able to add in a couple values. So here, we have at task task name, right? I want at task is completed. Oops, task is completed. Sometimes that's a bug that happens in Visual Studio. Just have to go back, clear it out. Task dot see doesn't give you a list. Do it again, and it's there. Weird bugs that happen, and remember we have that date created, right? And here I want to make this a short date string. All right, so pretty much we have our list now. We can be able, to, should be able to run this. This should return back no records found, and we should be good to go. So let's go ahead and see this task real quick. And here I forgot to put one in there, so let's just go tasks. Oops, did I say task, make it plural? Oh, so here it is. We get an SQL exception invalid object name task items. Well, it's interesting that that happens because we haven't yet been able to create our migrations. So now what we're gonna have to do is get in there and create our migrations. So what I always like to do is I like to open this up and open File Explorer. Now that I'm in File Explorer, I just click here in the address bar and I type CMD to open up a command window. Now this command window allows me a couple access. You will need .NET tools to be installed. 
um, and you will need to make sure that you install the .NET EF uh, framework. Plenty of videos on how to do that. Um, won't go into detail. So here, what we're going to do is we're going to say .NET EF, and we're going to create a migration, right? And we're going to say add. We're going to add a migration. Um, migration name. We're going to say task list or task items because that's the one that we created. Um, here, what we need to do because we have multiple projects, we're going to need to specify what the startup project is. Okay, so let's go ahead and specify startup project. Oops, I think it's like this startup project. And it's this root folder for the startup project. This allows it to know to go ahead and get that connection string from your app settings. So remember that. Um, and then here we're going to say project. This is where your DAO is going to be located. So in this project, you will then say we are back. So let's look at that real quick. It's back one and then to the DAO location. So here we're going to say, let me make that a little bit bigger. We're going to say slash slash dot dot slash um, task list dot DAO and slash, right? Let's put that in there. And that should create our migrations. Let's try that real quick. All right, so it created our migrations, gave me a little bit of a an error that I needed to update my EF Core Tools version. That's okay. Um, and now that we did that, let's go ahead and update our database. So now if I go to .NET EF um, database update, and again, because I have a startup project, but my DAO is located in a different area, we need to specify that again. So let's go in here, startup project is dot slash and then here we're going to go project and dot dot slash task list dot del slash and that should be really it now we can go ahead and hit enter this should update our database without having any issues i might not have the connection strings correct um We'll find out here in a second. Nope, looks like it ran, it updated the database. So now if I run this again, let's go ahead and hit Control F5 again. Um, run that, um, forgot to do that. Let's go here, task, no records found. So, and again, I'm not gonna go into updating this, making it look pretty for CSS. You can kind of get the point. Uh, right now, I just queried a database, no records were found. So that's where we are. Let's go ahead now and in the next little section here, I'm going to show we're going to move this into its own screen. So here, let's come back and let's create a base controller here or let's create another controller. With that controller, we're going to call it tasks, right? And we'll want to make sure that we move this file from the tasks option here, right? We'll want to move this here. We're going to create a new folder and call this tasks. Let's move this now down to here. Let's rename it to index, All right? Makes it a little bit easier for us. Um, and here from our home controller, we are going to do that. Copy that in and turn that view. Perfect. Now here, I like copying these. Makes it a little bit simpler. We're gonna call this tasks right now. That tasks controller. And let's go ahead and set up our inherits. There we go. Okay, so here's our tasks controller. We now should be able to, let's update our, no need for the home controller anymore. Let's go to our layout page here. 
and let's change our option from this privacy. I want to change this to tasks and index. And here we're going to call this tasks. All right, I'm going to also change this to so task list. Um, change the title tag up here, task list. Let's go down here and change. What I like doing sometimes is coming in here, saying add date, time, dot now, dot year. And then we'll say task list corporation. Kind of does, does a nice little cleanup. So now let's go ahead, let's take a look here. I'm gonna go back here to this index on tasks. And here, Um, I go striped. All right. Let's go ahead and rerun this. Now you can see my task list came forward, task list corporation. I click on tasks. And it's nice because now I have task name, is task completed, and is when was a task created. So now what I want to do in this next series that we're going to talk about here is actually creating the task. So let's go in here and create a model and or not a model, but let's create a method here for us. So we're going to say public I action result equals task, right? We're going to return a view, but this is going to be a new uh, task item, right? Bingo. There we go. So now what you see here is we return view new task item. So now let's go ahead and let's add a view. Now sometimes some people like using scaffolding, which is fine. I mean, you can definitely do that. Um, it makes it a little bit tough sometimes when you're trying to, they, like I've seen some developers that like stick with the scaffolding. You don't have to do that. Let's be real here, guys. Um, some people like creating view models and then creating those. Um, those are all things that we can talk about in other videos. This one's really just kind of how do I get started with a project? How does you know the Onion architecture really work in ASP.NET Core? So let's go ahead now and create add. Now again, this is scaffolding kind of does everything that we were looking for previously, right? Creates a nice, nice, easy, even to use form. And um, they call it task. That's interesting that they called it task. Um, I want to rename this to create, right? And the form action, again, we want it to be create. And we'll create that. There we go. All right. Now let's go back here. Oh, it's because I created it as task. Let's go ahead and create that as create. All right. So now if I go to create, I come in here. I can now go tasks, create. Oops. All right. And I can now mark my task name and is it completed? But what we're going to have to do is build that HTTP post so it has somewhere to save, right? So here, let's go ahead and say HTTP post, right? We're going to say public I action result. And here is going to be create. We're going to accept the task item model, right? I'm going to say if model state is valid then do this else we're going to return the view back with the model right so here this is pretty easy if the model state's valid right we are going to now do a simple db dot add model and here we have db 
save changes. Okay, now, and if we get to that, let's return redirect to action index, and that should be it. Let's go back here to our index and let's add this little button above this table. So I'm going to say div class, just because I like making it separate, separate row. And here I'm going to say HTML dot action link. And here we're going to say create new task. This is going to be create in the tasks controller. And we're going to say null and new. So we can specify. Oops. There we go. That should be good. Okay. We're going to specify a class here. And we're going to call it a button, button success. And there we go. Let's go ahead and run this now. So now if I hit create new task, I'm going to call this test task. It's not completed. And let's hit create. Now if you look, it did everything we asked it to do. Test task. Task is not completed, it's false. And then 5, 6, 20, 20. So makes it pretty nice, allows us the functionality to really kind of create, you know, new tasks, new functions in this app very easily with Onion architecture. Um, and the next step, we will go ahead and review how to edit this task and how to delete it. So. Let's go there and I will we'll update from there. All right, everybody. So now that we have our tasks being created, let's go ahead and start processing the edits, right? So let's go ahead and create an edit view on how this looks for a tasks in our edit. So here we'll say public I action result edit we have an ID here say return view I'm going to call it to the DB I'm going to find an ID I'm going to pass it um, let's do this just for time first or default it this way where am I off db oops I forgot to say task list oops there we go all right so now that we have db task list first or default let's go ahead and here we're going to add a view, it's going to be an edit, we're going to find task item, task list, DB context is already there, go ahead and hit add. Okay, so again, this all looks good, it's completed, kind of creates everything we want, I can get rid of that, don't like having that. Let's go over the crate and make sure that was removed too. Don't like having that on the bottom. Okay. So now we just need to come back in here and create a post for that. Let's move this crate up so it stays with its initial view. Now we are going to create edit. And then here. What I like to do is I just like calling var edit model equals db dot task items dot find model 
ID. Okay. And then here, what we're going to do is say edit model task name equals model dot task name edit model dot is completed model dot is completed now we just have to save our changes and as long as everything looks good it'll redirect if not it's going to throw the error so let's go ahead and run that option as well oops before i run that we forgot to add that to our list so if i come back here there's nothing over here to be able to do it but if i come here edit slash one it does it brings it up so before we get into that too deep let's go into index here i'm going to create another small column we're going to add two buttons here, right? I'm going to say task. Uh, we're going to say at HTML dot action link. It's going to say um, edit. Edit. Let's close that just so I can see where I'm at. This is going to be on the tasks controller. We're going to say new. I'm going to say id equals task.id. Bingo. So now there should be, and just because I get crazy over it, let's go text center. Alright. Tasks. Now I should be able to click edit. And if we just make that task two, hit save. Now it says task two, hit edit. Is completed, save. Now it is completed, is true. Now the thing is, is let's go open up SQL SSMS real quick. And let's take a look at what that's doing to the database. Every time that I'm clicking, what is that doing to our database? So let's take a look here at that and what it's doing. Okay, so let's go to that database. I created one earlier called task list. Come here to tables. I take a look here at task items. Now, if you remember from our base entity, we had that ID, date created, last modified, created by, modified ID, is deleted, task name, and is completed. So if you look here, the is deleted flag is currently at zero, right? But we originally created that 5.6 at 2.27, but the last time it was modified was 5.6 at 2.43. So as you can see, that override methods that we originally created is actually working. It's updating, it's keeping everything up to date, that we're only having to update the little fields that we need, right? It kind of makes it nice to kind of have that object-oriented approach. Now, how do we handle deletes? And remember, that's where we just change the flag then is to is deleted. So let's go in here and let's create one, right? Let's create, let's add another action button here. And I like putting a little pipe and a separator. Let's copy this just so that here we can do a delete. So I'll Now, and this, this option, you, you could have a little pop-up that says, are you sure you want to delete this? I'm going to actually have it in interest of time, go to a page, ask the same question, are you sure? We'll use the standard scaffolding to make that work and make that happen. Um, so let's go ahead here first and, oops, let's keep these together. And let's create a public I action result. And it's going to be delete. And here we have int ID. I'm going to say return. Same thing that was up here for the edit. Very similar. All right. Let's right click on delete here. Let's add a view. Let's go here to delete model class. And we're going to create based on task item. Hit add. All 
All right, so now it says, um, are you sure you want to delete this? It kind of gives out the tasks. And then input hidden, input mass submit, back to list. Uh, we'll keep that for now. So here, let's go ahead now and create the delete. Right? And this one, let's remove that. Let's change that to delete. We're not going to delete it. We're actually now going to do this, delete model. It's going to find the one from the model that it was submitting and which was our delete here, right? Processes the ID. Don't really need to change. You could have just put in regular model ID. That's okay. Um, here, let's go ahead and hit DB, remove, and then delete model, All right? Makes it pretty simple. So now we should run this. It should give us the option, are you sure you want to delete it? And go from there. So here now we can go into tasks. I can now come in here to hit delete. Are you sure you want to delete this? Yes, I do. Hit delete. Oh, and it took us back here. Something happened. Um, oh, I remember we had this if model state is valid. Take that. It's actually telling us that the model isn't valid. Um, so let's go back and this one, there you go. Now we should be able to go back here and go to tasks. I'm sure you want to delete this one. Yep. I want to delete. I hit delete and that screwed us up. Something happened. Let's take a look. Let's find out why. Probably because this model's not passing an ID. Let's find out why. Let's take a look. Is the model actually passing? Does it pass as a one? To see what it does. Sorry about that. I hit F10 and it was pretty interesting because F10 also stops the recording on that. So I apologize. Um, it was passing. It looks like it was passing. Let's take a look here if this is actually, this thing is actually saying is deleted. It's showing up here now as one. So if I refresh that, there's obviously a problem here with our query filters. And that's what we need to go back and make sure that we fix. So let's take a look here. It did update it. It did send it. So that tells me that we made a mistake here in our overrides. And looks like it's that option right there, the set global filters. Let me take a look here. Um, oh, I forgot in this section, we need to add on the on model creating, right? So on our on model creating, there's a there's an override that basically as it's creating the model, it we can override that. So let's go ahead and override on model creating and here what we need to do is we just need to go for each and we're going to say type and get entity types and this one we're going to say var method which is basically calling out that set global query method which is make a generic method we're going to say true and then here we'll say, go ahead and invoke this. When you do that, um, invoke, oops, and I put true. Um, let's put change, I think it needs to be type. Yeah, there we go. And we're gonna say invoke this and new object array and model builder. Now, if we run that, it should now not show that original item as deleted because here in the flag, it shows as is deleted. So let's take a look here at what was created. If we go here to tasks, it should say no records found, which is exactly correct. But if you look here, my column span was three before. So let's go in there and fix that real quick. Back here to our list, column span now should be four. Save that. 
brush that and that should come across perfectly so now we have everything from create edit and delete so as i come in here i can create tasks uh test task one two three it's not completed we're going to hit create i now have the ability to edit that say it's completed that now changed my flag to that I can create another one test me uh, not completed I can now choose to delete that option it's now deleted so there's a lot of rules that obviously you can see by creating an onion architecture and kind of how things get kind of started um, it's nice to be able to have multiple projects like I said as things get bigger this is a very small app very small demo um, but as things get started it can definitely add to it so now that we have a few other things I like to make sure and give you guys examples you know here in services layer this is where I would probably put something like we're gonna create an email service right we might create a file storage service you might create a text message service you know you might create a bunch and here for example I'm gonna create a couple things just to kind of show you what the services layer would do so I'm gonna create an I email service right we're gonna create an interface we're also going to create a class to kind of get that going email service and we're gonna set that public class and we're gonna say inherit the I email service the interface um, the biggest thing and anything that you do with these is you want to make sure that then you inherit those and set them as their singletons um, inside your startup class it's very important that you set that up and actually i'm sorry add it as a transient so here i might say services dot add transient and here i'm going to say i email service email service right oops and let's move that let's control dot that see what it is i'm um, using that and that should be i email service let's go back here to this i email service public now in this email service we might want to create certain things you know if you want to be able to have like a centralized location for all of your email management um this is where that would kind of get set up you'd be able to kind of set up you know for example something like this we'll say task send email uh, sync and then this one we're going to say string to email string from name right string subject and then maybe string message right so then now in our actual email service when that actually happens we can now create here let's right click on this email service implement interface and here is where you would put in the code for example you know all of your system.net infrastructure so that's kind of what that would look like how that would look then is on my task controller every time a task we could set up an email service here so let's set that up that if we said um, here we're gonna say private I email service right we're gonna call this email service and semicolon and from here is I email service email service right. specify that email service email service so now what you could do is if you said if edit model dot is completed then you want to send an email to somebody saying that it was completed right so you then here you would say I'm gonna send it Kevin at test.com I'm gonna send it from you know KC at test dot com here I'm gonna set up you know task was completed and then maybe your body was you know such and such created you know task here we'll say let's put a 
dollar sign there and make it a little easier. We'll say edit model not ID was completed on and then here we'll say model date time dot now dot two short date show. And we'll just say it like that. Leave it like that. So what would happen then is in this scenario, we're going to say email service, send an email asynchronously to that task. Now, what you might want to do here is you might put in a sync, make this a task, right? And then here, because I made it asynchronously that way, because you're waiting on some backend service to complete, this thing now makes it an awaitable sync. So that makes it very easy for us to be able to send emails through the system without having any slowdown or waiting for email services to speed up. This system should totally work once you implement, obviously, this feature. And this is just very standard. Implement your standard email te template here. But that's truly what the services layer is for, is to kind of have all that centralized business logic your domain kind of holds all of your models and everything that needs to be done. Your DAL is all of your data access layer. Now the trick is here is that if something ever happened and you needed to create a web API, you can be able to add in tasklist.webapi and automatically have a web API that is available. So this kind of summarizes everything with this app, kind of lets you guys see how this app works. I will include a link to be able to download this code and kind of get started and see how this works. I am open for questions, so please let me know if you have any questions. But this was kind of my first video and what I want to kind of create in a series. Um, please let me know if there's anything you want me to kind of cover or how to do in .NET Core. I like kind of trying to create these videos. Had a lot of fun today creating this and hope you guys understand a little bit more about how I create apps to get kind of started, how, why I create, you know, a separate DAO, why I create a separate domain, why the services layer and then the web layer. Um, makes a very clean code, um, allows you to kind of keep everything segmented folder wise. It also allows for great unit testing and not having to rewrite a bunch of code if you have to add another UI layer or if there's something else that needs to be accessible. So again, very nice, kind of showed you guys .NET Core 3.1, how .NET Core works. And I hope that this is very informational. If there's any questions, please reach out to me and thank you.